Louisiana, you need to get healed. Your stomach needs to get healed. So got, got the holidays coming up, and it's going to be hot. <laughs> that's, that's really great. It's just so wonderful. And I was talking to you guys a couple weeks about living above the line, and uh, I want to just talk about it because, it, you know, you know, I was talking about spiritual warfare and how God wants us to live above the line. And the enemy just wants to move us a little bit. You know, he does. He just wants to move you out of living really in faith in the world of faith. He wants you to move you in believing in faith, but struggling. That's a short trip. You know what I mean? It's just one slip up that can move you from uh Man, I'm just on fire for God. I'm, I'm, I'm in faith. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm full of joy. Life is awesome. One little slip up and then you're like, I'm struggling. I don't want to read my Bible. I'm back kind of where I was before. And if you're not careful, you can just uh, make a judgment call that this place up here above the line doesn't exist. Right. Because you can say, well, I was just fooling myself, you know, that that I could live this way. Everybody's got to live here below the line. See, people will always assume that what they're experiencing is what is real. Right. And so when most even many pastors and leaders and Christians, they believe this is everybody lives below the line. It's all a struggle. You know, everybody's in sin. Everybody sins every day and all that stuff. People say it's all because they 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 just took a little trip from here down to here and they could not get back. And they just got frustrated and they let frustration get in their mind. They say, you know what? I'm, I don't have to believe in healings. God loves me and, and I'm going to heaven, you know, so what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is, of course, you lose all the people you could have won, all the blessing you could have been, <laughs> all that stuff that you could have done for God. You lost it all by just a little movement below the line. Are you with me? The just shall live by faith. That means the just shall live above the line where it's the promised land. Where all the promises come true. Uh, where God shows you the end from the beginning. And you live, even though maybe your kids aren't right where you want them to be, but you see it. And you sort of live in the reality. Like, I'm, I'm not living in depression about what is. I'm going to live in joy about what's coming. That's what living by faith is. I'm not going to be living in the struggle. I'm going to say there must be something good at the end of the struggle. So I'm going to start living over where the end of this thing is. And I'm going to choose to emotionally and physically. Uh, someone told me the last time I, I, I spoke, they said that they checked. And it, doctors, the American Medical Association says now 90% of all illnesses are connected directly to stress or psychosomatic, the, the effect of the mind, your thoughts on your body, that you would be free of 90% of all illnesses. Do you know doctors just handing out medicine, hospital just checking people in, and 90% of them is what they did to themselves with their thoughts. Thoughts they couldn't shake. Unconscious thoughts, conscious thoughts, processing thoughts, imaginations, all those things that we call our thought life. It ended people, uh, ended their lives, ended their peace, ended their marriage, ended their success, ended their joy. And it was not what other people did to them. It's what they thought about what other people did to them. It's not what their circumstance was, it's what they thought about their circumstance. Two people could have the same exact circumstance, one's full of joy, one's sleeping good, the other one can't sleep at night and staying up all night and, and taking pills, right? And you know, and, 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 and it is that simple. You say, oh, it can't be that, oh, it's that simple. Because the battleground, and some of you have been there, and some of you are there right now, the battleground is in your mind. Because that's where you give up ground. You don't physically give up any ground. You don't physically come below any line. You mentally go below the line. That's what it's like to be. Wherever you're thinking, that's where you are. Right? If you think, man, my life is terrible. Okay. 
Keep thinking it, that's what you get. It is what you think it is. Well, my marriage is terrible. Okay, it is what you think it is. And so you, can, you got to choose. You get all the choice to say about your life, to think about your life, whatever you choose to do. This is not, God is not going to make it. You can, like a person that has a negative leaning, you can have, they can win the lottery. Two days later, they'd be like, why did I win that lottery? Everybody wants my money. <laughs> they're like miserable. They got a new Mercedes. You know, they bought three houses and now they're just miserable. You can't make these people happy. They get a big income tax return. They're all upset because now they're fighting over how they're going to spend it. Like, hey, because you can't make them happy because no matter what happens, there's a way for them to twist it into something negative because they have a negative mind, which is very common. The world's full of disappointments. It's full of tragic stories. It's full of scary things. So it's easy to have a negative mind to expect the worst. Living by faith is expecting the best. Expecting, God, expecting God's intervention. All things are working together for my good. I don't care what it is. All things are not good, but they're working together for my good. I can't lose. So I got no reason ever to be sad. Now I might mourn when someone dies and I might have a moment of sadness about a loss or something, but it can't, it, it, you know, my mind is buoyant. So my whole life is buoyant. You know what buoyant means? That means like a, it floats, <laughs> right? If you can, dug, you can, you can, dunk me under the water like a volleyball, but I just poof, come back up because I got a program that says it don't matter what happens. You always come into the top. So what you worry about everything that's coming against you is working for you. So it's making you more like Jesus. So what you upset about? Well, some people, they just determined to be upset. They determined to be stressed. They don't care. They don't care if they got $5 million or $50 million. They're still upset about something. Because money can't fix your mind. Neither can a pill, neither can a bottle, neither can a change. You can have all your debts paid up, don't matter. You, unhappy people, they're always unhappy. Happy people, they're always happy. And that, when Jesus taught the Beatitudes, it, it is a whole teaching on always be happy. Be happy if you're persecuted. Be happy if you if you've got trouble. Be happy if things are great. It's the be happy attitude. The be attitudes. Be happy. Jesus said, "This is the you can't succeed in life unless you determine. I don't care what happens. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm a successful person. Success is determined by what you think success is. Right? If peace of mind is success, you can find it." But if your success is, oh, I've got to have this and got to do that or I can't be happy, well, that's you. You made the rules, right? Make them as hard as you want. But if I can be happy with just the woman I got, come on, somebody, and happy with the house I've got, happy with the car I've got, I just became a rich man. I'm, in fact, I'm the richest man I know. I'm not bad, boasting, but I can tell you, I, I could buy anything I want to buy. I just don't want to buy anything. I just write a check for it. I don't want it. So I'm rich because I didn't want it. I just changed what I wanted and became rich. I did not think of all the things I wish I had and could have if I only had one of those. You know, I already know the end for the beginning. And that's just one of those. If you read the book of Revelation, it's a horrible, horrible things happening. In the very end, it says, oh, by the way, you win and you reign with Jesus forever. So I already read the end of the book. I know how this thing is already going to end. So, in fact, I, don't, I haven't watched the Saints game this year. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I haven't watched it. Why? Because Diane tapes them, and if we didn't win, I don't watch it. Because I already know how it is. I only want to watch the one that I already know we're going to win. I've watched five games so far this year, but none of them live. I've watched them all after the fact. I already knew we were going to win. I didn't know, no disappointing field goal at the end. Nothing that's going to happen to me. I've got an insulation called a recording mechanism. I ain't watching it live when I can always know the end. I think a spoiler is a good thing. Spoil me and let me know how this thing ends. Then I'll invest three and a half hours of my precious time. So... To think, I love this scripture, Mark 12, 30 to 31. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your souls, let's call that our emotion for a moment, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. In other words, God says, okay, let's just talk about your mind. God said, love God with your whole mind, with every thought. You say you love God, well, then stop being so stinking negative. Stop being stressed. I'm just stressed right now. Okay, stop. You can't stop. Oh, yes, you can. And once you know that you can, that this is a choice you are making to be stressed out, then it is a subject of repentance and not self-pity. There's just so much going on. You ever notice the people with nothing going on, they're the ones that are stressed out? And there's so much going on. Like, first of all, my, my nails broke. And second of all, probably going to need two tires. Third of all, I just I only got $500 a month raise, not a eight. I was expecting eight. Okay, you. You are just determined to self-pity is more important than success to you. You just hooked on feeling sorry for yourself and coming up with reasons why you're miserable. And that's, I'm not being ugly, you know, but you don't come to church to hear what you want to hear. Hopefully. (laughs) You're as happy as you want to be. You're as close to Jesus as you want to be. You're as joyful as you want to be. Some of y'all just don't want it. You just don't want it. You don't make decisions that suggest you actually want this. Someone can say, I want to I make all A's, but they don't want to get up and go to school. I think you don't want to make all A's. Because <laughs> you're not willing to make the decisions it's going to take, so you just fantasize. You don't have vision. you got fantasy. So it's important that your life is all about how you think. We have a plague of amusement and entertainment. The word muse, when you say music, music means to make you think. Isn't it true? When they played that music, when you, we were thinking, weren't you? You were looking at those words. The music was playing. You were thinking about God. You were thinking about the greatness. So muse means to make think. It's actually a, a little creature called a muse that inspired people. But forget about that paganism. But the word came from the idea that muse is to stop and think and get good ideas to muse. So when you listen to music, especially good music, it's, it causes you to think. It transforms you out of problems above things. Amusement means not to think. Like asexual means doesn't have any, any sexuality. Asexual. Amusement means you don't think. So we have a plague of, I don't want to think. I want the TV or the video game or the constant noise to keep me from thinking. And and you don't think how much you're losing. I mean, we have a generation now that before they can speak, they're experts at amusement and entertainment. Ellie, my Ellie. She's at my house. She's great. I love her. She can't speak English, but she thinks she can so she's like, hey, that's really, that's really, that's Papa. <laughs> and we do that. Papa, she's speaking in tongues. Before she spoke in English, she like a whole sentence, and she's serious, and you have to interpret what she's saying. And, and I just go along with like, yeah, yeah. Then the more I go along with, the more she's just talking. She's just steady like. But the one thing that's funny is she already knows what TV shows she likes and don't like. So she's, people who can talk and read are taking orders from the person who can't talk yet. <laughs> like, we're putting on stuff. Like, you like this? She'd be like, no. <laughs> what about this? <laughs> no. What about that? No, I ain't on that. And then finally, we, we stumble across, it's a Christian video. We stumble across the Christian video, and she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And we're all feeling, like, super successful. Yes, yeah, she wants it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, she can't speak, but she's an expert in amusement and entertainment already. And because it's such an easy thing for parents to put your kids down in front of video games and what have you, gives you hours of freedom. We don't even know what this generation is going to be like who have, before they could speak, they learn to turn their brain off. Well, they're just learning stuff. Well, yeah, maybe they're learning stuff. But the most important thing is they're not thinking. 
they're letting other people think and they're just listening to what other people, you know, they're looking at images, imagining things. And, and so we have never seen a generation like that, that in their baby baskets, there's a phone with videos playing like that. <laughs> I mean, I people, this, these kids can, can, I can get stuck on my iPad, and they're like, oh, I got that. I said, I mean, you're four years old. I got that. Just do this. Yeah. I mean, they're amazing. They're, they're learning some amazing things that I don't know, but they're not learning critical thinking. They're not learning how to think for themselves, and it is really, we don't know what's going to happen to them because they're locked into a screen that's teaching them what to think. And I mean, at least make sure it's Christian, you know, some Christian thing that they're looking at. And, you know, all of the things that we enjoy were uh, were from people who chose to think instead of not to think. Uh, You know, some of you watch the Ford versus Ferrari. I did about 100 times. My wife laughs like I was like, I have an idea. We watch a movie. What? Ford versus Ferrari? Because I just love the sound of those cars and I like those characters and. I like to watch it, but in the movie, there's Henry Ford II, and he tells the story of Henry Ford I, and he says, my great-grandfather was taking a walk, and he was ruminating. I don't even know what that means, but he said he was ruminating, and he was ruminating. While he was ruminating, he came up with this idea, I know exactly how to make cars on an assembly line, and from there came, of course, the Ford Motor Company that changed its billions and billions of cars and dollars. And it came from a thought. Same thing with electricity. You know, a guy was looking like, man, hey, we can get that on a key. I can put it in a jar. We can make light. Same thing with telephone, Alexander Bell. He was thinking like, you know, there must be a way if vibrations can go through a string. It should be able to go through. We should make this work. Well, all these people that changed the world were thinkers. They chose to think and they engaged this part of them that animals don't have. Only people made in the image of the likeness of God have this ability to lock in this powerful uh, mechanism. So when you're being talked out of thinking, you're being talked out of blessing. Where you're being talked out of, look, man, I'm the honest truth. I'm not saying I'm the greatest guy in the world, but I am saying I, I'm by myself in my car, ain't nothing playing. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, man. Thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm just thinking, man. Because uh, I, I, have, I, have, I understand that the, the, uh, the glorious part of life is engaging with the Holy Spirit and thinking and choosing my thoughts and what are we going to create and what are we going to do and solving problems, imagining the future, not worrying about what things are, but dreaming there is an answer here and God has it and God's going to give it to me. But Larry can tell you, I, was, I got up one morning and the Holy Spirit told me, we were trying to figure out where this pipe was here that was going to put for the kid's toilet. I woke up in the morning and the Holy Spirit told me where that pipe was. It turns out it was there. I was as shocked as everybody else. It went right under our bathroom. And we were about to do like a 200 foot line or 300 foot line. I mean, like one day and the Holy Spirit woke me and said, I, I, I ain't doing right. I was like, what? And I had to, see, to me, now I've discovered that God is wanting to tell me all the secrets, but I got to invest in thinking and turn off the ridiculous TV set. Get off Facebook, whatever it is that's spending your time. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to tell you, trying to be legalistic with you. I'm just saying the most important thing you can do beyond praying or reading the word, the most important, the most powerful thing you can do is think. And most people, when I say your thought life, you're like, yes, I'm always negative. I'm always thinking these terrible thoughts. I've got lustful thoughts. I've got, you know, I've got greedy thoughts. I've got angry thoughts. I've got bitterness. So when people get all these unpleasant things dwelling in their head, they want to avoid thinking. Are you with me? And this is the thing God gave you to create your life. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Let me me paraphrase that. You are your thoughts. 
like ruminate on that for a second. You are, well, I never think, well, that's why you feel like nobody. I never create. Well, that's because you're, you're not, you're thinking of problems, not solutions. That's the best thing about you. The most powerful thing about you. Listen, God speaks to your spirit, but he reveals through your mind, through your thoughts. I'm going to give you that one more time. Get it in your mind. God, he's a spirit. He speaks to your spirit and it's in another language. It's in spiritual language. Now, for some people that are connected, the minute that God speaks to their spirit, their mind gets it. And like they say, they say stuff like God spoke to me. Like I, I talked that way. But there was a little thing happening. There was God was speaking to my spirit and I'm used to getting on that channel and it comes in English to me sometimes. And the more difficult it is, God will give me the answer. It's in my spirit by his anointing on my life and on yours. It's there. And you got to put some time to mine it out. You got to, you got to go drilling and you got to see if you don't, some of you, you think you got big problems and you need a vacation. That's true. We need to go to Disney world. You don't need to go to Disney world. Come on, somebody. You can't vacation at Disney world. If your vacation makes you tireder than regular life, it is not a vacation. If you, if you got to spend three weeks planning and spending all the money and packing, and if, if you're stressed out just thinking about your vacation, that ain't a vacation. It's another activity. And some of you got one day off on Saturday and you're doing projects on Saturday. That's why people drop out of church because they're trying to survive. They only had Sunday. Then their wife made them come to church on Sunday. And so they get like, like they get a couple of hours to watch TV. And listen, I'm, I'm, I know I'm kind of teasing, but listen, you need a vacation just to go sit and think. Yes. Organize one of those. You're going to get saved again. You're going to feel like the, 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 everything is better. If you just stop and say, you know what? I'm spending all Saturday. What you doing? Nothing. You're going to be resting? No, I'm just going to go walk in the woods. I'm going to go sit on the beach. Why y'all going to be doing nothing? That's what Sabbath was supposed to be. You get in trouble if you just even picked up a dog on Sabbath. It was like God said, you need some nothing time so that you can get your thinking rebooted yeah. and stop thinking so crazy. Yeah. And so if you're dealing with crazy thoughts, the first thing is take some time to stop and think. Sleep and think and stop and sleep and think. If your life doesn't allow you that, you're in for a bad day. It's coming. You're going to act, think, you're going to see things that ain't there. You're going to imagine problems and you're going to create you some more problems because you thought that God needed to rest one whole day, but you don't need to rest at all. You're just going to keep going. On you know, Sunday, you got to get home and build that shed. You don't need a shed you need a clear mind. You need some of you guys. God needs to make you rest. He, he needs, what does that say? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me. Sometimes God's going to just say, you know what? You want to just voluntarily rest? Or are we just going to let this happen at the hospital? Because some of you, and I'm not, I'm just being this, I'm going to prophesy to you. Some of you are creating a mess just because you're not resting. That's a side note. That's not even in my sermon. You are your thoughts. You are. This is who you are. Now, I want to, I'm going to skip down so we can finish soon. Four indisputable life-giving truths about thoughts. The first one is this. You can arrest your negative thoughts. You can and you must. Now, some of you think, I can't. I just can't. I just get so depressed. I can't. Okay, easy trigger. Stop saying you can't when you can do all things through Christ. You're already arguing with God. God said you can and you say you can't. It's just so, but the feeling, all those feelings are based on thoughts. 
conscious or unconscious, when you're having negative feelings, if it's not like you need a nap or maybe you have a stomach ache or maybe you just, uh, you know, most of the time, bad feelings are stuff that you haven't processed. You haven't thought about it and you haven't resolved it. And so you, you, you're making a habit of putting things off. You keep sweeping stuff under the rug and you don't, you don't keep it clean. Get rid of it. You don't process it. So a lot of what people struggle with is they just are real sloppy when it comes to the most important part of their life, or at least one of the most, and that's your, who you are, your thoughts. And you've got to understand that you have to, under, your responsibility is to capture those bad thoughts. They, you know, in, in, in your cells, they call it free radicals, don't they? That makes you old. Free radicals bounce around until they just beat yourselves to, to death. And then you start looking like some of us in here. <laughs> and, you know, antioxidants are there to capture the free radicals. Some of you got free radical thoughts. And they're just free all over the place. Ping, 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 ping. And they're just beating the heck out of your life. You need to have some Holy Ghost antioxidants. To get in your head and start absorbing all them free radicals, you got to capture them. Now, let me read you the scripture. For 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 5 says this. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Hold up. That was a mouthful and it also sounded spiritual. But what did it mean? Well, it says, first of all, strongholds have to be destroyed. You have divine power through your weapons to destroy strongholds. And let's give me an idea of what it is. A stronghold is something that has a stronghold on you. In other words, you can't think, quit thinking those depressing thoughts. Something's telling you you can't live without that drug or that negative behavior. And you've tried everything. You've gone to church, gone to an encounter, and you still have a persisting that you've done everything you can do. You've tried to process. You've talked to people. You've tried to forgive. But still, it's a nagging stronghold. It comes from the idea of an enemy that's hidden behind a big rock cliff that you can throw all the artillery at him in the world, like in Afghanistan, but you can't get to him. That's a stronghold. They built stronghold in the mountains. That means that you can use all your weapons, but you can't blow it up. So the enemies are safe behind what would be unconscious thoughts. Like something terrible happened when you were being raised and you thought, people don't like me. People will reject me. Men will hurt you. People will abuse you. And you, you this thing became like deep. And it became like the, 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 the glasses that you see life through. That's a stronghold. And the Bible says you have to destroy it. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'll get yet. Yeah, well, he, you obviously can or he wouldn't tell you to do it. Use your weapons and destroy strongholds. Why am I still like this? Why do every time I do good, I just start doing wrong? Why do I always tear down the very thing I just started building? Because it can't happen this many times without being in a stronghold. You can't have this pattern in your life of destroying your own success and your own success in God. You can't have this pattern unless it's rooted in a way of thinking that says you're doing too good now. Now it's time to self-destruct. And psychologists call it like self-sabotage. There's a lot of names. People have identified it. But the Bible calls it a stronghold. Because no matter how you try, you keep going back to that way of thinking. And the Bible says, tear it down. And I'll tell you how in the future. But just believe what the Bible says. You got to use your weapons and you got to destroy strongholds. Then it says, arguments. Arguments. Thoughts that argue against God's word. I think, I, I think Blaine was just mentioning it. Like before I had a, he had this thought saying, you know what? Even at the encounter, I, he got his mind free. Before that, he's like, I'm going to have to live with this. You know, I, I probably deserve it. I, you know, I don't need God to do that for me. That's just uh, arguments. They put up an argument like, oh, it's true. 
You know, it's like being suspicious of whether God is really true or it's his word's really true. It's those, hmm, I'm not sure. It's that, that like God says, give and it shall be given, but you still don't give. That's, that's a stronghold slash argument. Because you're poorer because you don't give and you're dumb. But you're, you know how argumentative people are? They're usually so dumb they should just zip it. Oh, don't shout me down. Oh, y'all get quiet in here now. Because you think you're so smart, but you, if when you start arguing against God's word, you've made a fool out of yourself. You're not richer because you kept what belonged to God. You're poorer, and your children are poorer, and your children's children are poorer, and you're sicker, and the money's going anyway to doctors and all the dumb decisions you're about to make. The best you can think you can do is put God first, but you got an argument about that. Well, you use your weapons to say, you, what? you know what? I don't want to do it, but I'm just going to war against that and say, if God says it, I'm going to do it. You got to just settle it. If God said it, it's true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. Settle it. If God says it, it's true. Well, I'm not. Men wrote the Bible, brother. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I ain't going to have an argument with you. You got an argument with yourself against God's words. You go ahead and keep that argument because you're getting the fruit of that argument in your life. Me agreeing with God brings the fruit. And what we, I'm not talking about money. I'm not, look, if I boast, I boast in the Lord. But I can't think of a happier day. I'm standing there. My grandchildren are dancing. And, and my great-grandchildren, they're dancing in front of me before the Lord. My son is leading worship. Hello. I got it good. I'm the richest man I know. I'm the most successful guy I know. I mean, I'm a... I'm overwhelmed. You know, how did I, how was I so clever? I just believe what God said and we're going to do what God says. That's how clever I was. I tore down arguments against what God says. If God says it, going to do it. Don't be unreasonable. That, that is reasonable thinking. I've reasoned and I've become unreasonable. My reasoning is God's word is true and God is always, no matter what it looks like, God's always going to win. And in my reasoning and my right thinking, I've decided I don't care what it looks like. God's way always works. Yeah. And then it says the last one. Don't you love this one? Lofty opinions. Oh, here we go. Well, I'll tell you what I think. Oh, there's some trouble. Unless you talk about the saints, it don't matter. Everybody's got a thought about the saints. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all fun. Good and because we know we don't, it's, we got a bunch of millionaires running around in, in tights and we're all worried about if they're going to make it. Oh, they'll be all right. They got paid 24 million last year. They'll be all right. <laughs> you in a fantasy world. They're going to be, they all, they all are just laughing on the way home, even when they get beat bad. They're like, we got it going. <laughs> but lofty opinions take hold of those lofty opinions arrest those now see i'm telling you something simple don't make it complicated you can or god wouldn't tell you to do it use your weapons what are your weapons the word of god in other words read it in the morning read it at night put it in your car confession Take God's word, whatever it is you're struggling with, take God's word and say, you know what? I believe that whatsoever things I lay my hands to is blessed by the Lord. Well, that's what God said. I'm just going to begin to confess what God said. This is a weapon. Worship, as you saw a minute ago, worship is a weapon. Powerful. Right? You can be in a total bad attitude. Get, get, hello, get in church. Listen, get in church. That's a weapon. You get around all these other people and you come to yourself. Yeah. Well, I don't really need to go. You don't really need to go, but you, you know, you don't need to take a bath either. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's making you brush your teeth. Matter of fact, my grandson forgot to brush his teeth this morning. <laughs> but he did find an old toothbrush in my room. And <laughs> so we're going to call that semi-brush. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing you. He's good. Smell his breath when it's over with. He's all right. He's all right. 
But nobody's going to make you brush your teeth. Nobody's going to make you take a bath. Nobody's going to give you a shower. But you've got to take it on yourself. I want to be clean. If I'm going to be clean, I'm going to have to make some decisions here. So you can, you, you don't ever tell, I can't quit thinking that because it's not true. You just have it. Here you are with your weapons. Use them. It's like a parent that won't spank their own kids. You're like, what's wrong with you? You're ruining your kids. That's what that butt's sticking out for. It has zero use the rest of your life. It's sticking out because you, got, you can beat it down. <laughs> and the bigger the butt, the more they need these spanks. Just teasing. <laughs> That's not true. Don't be looking at people and say, ah, Pastor said, I know what you got. You didn't get enough spanking. I can see that. When someone has the power to spank their kids and they won't, you think, what are you doing? Why are you letting these kids run? Why are you afraid? Just stand up and be consistent. Don't be cruel. Just take care of business and your kids will love you for it and they won't curse you. They'll bless you for it. But you got to get up and take some charge. You're in charge. Well, I work all the time. I don't want to come and spank. But look, just because you work, you still have to spank. Don't let guilt talk you out of having a happy family or a healthy child. I just feel guilty. Don't. These are just thoughts. Do what's best for your children. Don't be angry. Don't be frustrated. Don't spank in anger. But you make sure that God is honored in your home by saying that. And when people won't control their thoughts, it's like a bunch of bad kids running around there. I don't know. I can't do anything. Yes, you can. In fact, you're the only one who can. And whether you do or not is you. You get what I'm saying? You are your thoughts. And if they're a mess, it's only you that can fix them. Well, I'm just going to just start reading the Bible. Good. If it's not enough, confess it. If it's not enough, sing it. If it's not enough, go make, write down some confessions. But you got to go to war. And so that you can live a happy life. That you can live the, the purpose of God. Now, let me finish real quick. Number one is you can arrest your negative thoughts. Number two, you can set your positive thoughts. Set. This is a Greek word that means set. (laughs) That's a joke, really, but it does mean it. I'll I'll tell you in a minute. (laughs) In the original Greek, if you go back to the Aramaic, it means set. You know, like you, you, you set a, a type, you know, you, you, you set your timing on your car, you know, your, you know, your motor, you can set it. There's certain things you got to get it set just right. Are y'all with me? Yes. You're going to have a mess if you don't set that tool just right. I can't come up with the illustrations, but y'all ladies know what I'm talking about. There's some things, if you get it set, it's going to go good. If you don't set it, it's going to be crazy. You got to set your power. I don't know if I could do that. Well, look what the Bible said. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Now, that, this is the classic amplified version, which kind of explains the exact Greek word. So we find out that set your mind on these things actually means... Um, Think on them, weigh them, meditate on them, take account on these things. That's what it means to fix. So you got a choice. The weather is all dreary outside. You can have this conversation. Man, it's horrible outside. When it's like this, it just makes me feel like I got a headache all the time. Okay, here we go. You're on a roll now. Don't stop now. You haven't really got negative. Keep going. Well, when it's like this, you know, I just start thinking about when my dog died. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're on the dog died story now. 
And here, because like, once you're on that track of that time that people betray, oh, speaking of betrayal, let me tell you what happened. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, all you had to have is some dark skies outside, and you about ready to blow your brains out. <laughs> God forbid no one's going to do that. But you're talking yourself into a hole just because the weather is transient and it's moving through, you know. And this is where you live. And the Bible says, if there's anything good, think about that. If there's anything worthy of praise, if there's anything, and, and here's what you have to do. You want to set something? It goes, I'm going to say, I, I was in this situation this morning because this jury had to get up. I did some work yesterday and I had to get up and deliver or do something this morning. And I, I you know, don't like to do that. And I was distracted and I was working on my sermon and I was doing these other things. Okay, and I'm feeling it. And this dreary is not helping me at all. You know what I had to do? I had to say, today is going to be an awesome day. Suddenly my mind cracked open. Light started coming through the darkness. <laughs> and I started like, I'm starting to pull up the blinds now. I said, you know what? This must be some kind of crazy warfare. God must be going to do something awesome. Wait a second. I'm on to something here. And, and suddenly now my my. my <laughs> I start looking forward like church. It's going to be great today, man. And before it's over with, I had to set my mind. My mind ain't blowing in the wind. I had to say, is there anything lovely? Is there anything good? Is there anything worthy of praise? Is there anything good I can say? Is there anything good, a good way to see it? Is there another way to say it? I'm just going to start saying it that way because I can. Let everybody else, it was like Susie said, it was a bad day, but it was an awesome day. That's because she goes to a great church. I'm not taking all the credit, just 65%. I'm teasing. But every believer, you're going to go through a dark day here and there, and you're going to have to learn to set your thoughts and stop letting your thoughts bring you in the ditch. And so I don't know, you know, I just like this girl, and I start feeling lustful thoughts. Don't. Change your mind. Why can you say that? Well, because you have control over those thoughts. I don't. See, the big lie of the enemy is that thinking about it won't hurt you. The big lie. Going back to that old lustful way of thinking, that old depressed way of thinking, that old, you know what, it won't hurt you just to think about it. I mean, don't go smoke dope. Just think about smoking dope. How would it work? And when would you do it? And it won't, God's going to forgive you. Okay, that's all bull. One thought will hurt you. You keep, you keep playing around that edge, you're going to fall off. And the one lie is this, thinking about it, the one lie told to Judas, like, you know what, you know, Jesus, he's just off. And you need to protect him from himself. Remember that woman came in and washed his feet. It was a prostitute and touching him and it made him look so bad. And Judas started, well, see, Judas just wanted to use God to get money. That was his real problem. That's really what was the evil. And he, he had such a beautiful opportunity to be with Jesus, but he had a little thought issue. He thought, you know what? I can make some money and I can save Jesus from this terrible direction. He's taking the whole ministry in. Well, it, Judas ends up hanging himself because one thought can kill you. One thought can make you leave your husband or your wife. One thought can lose all your money and all your health. One thought. And the lie is, just like the Garden of Eden, a well-timed suggestion. It's like, why don't we think about this? Oh, it ain't going to hurt. Oh, it's the only thing that does hurt. Sow a thought, reap a feeling. Sow a feeling, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit, a secret habit, the worst kind. So a habit, reap an identity. So an identity, reap a lifestyle. So a lifestyle, reap an eternity. Doesn't take long to figure out that that first thought 
I was talking to a precious young man. He was struggling on his deathbed. All he could do is remember that the, how bitter he was for the first person that abused him sexually. Of all of that he went through, the one thing was on his mind on his deathbed was it all started with not what happened, but how bitter I was that it happened and it opened up a whole world. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Oh, one thought can change it. Oh, I don't want to. Cause see, because you got away with that one thought and you got away. Well, I'm just going to think some depressed thoughts again. You got away with it. And you thought, well, there must not. <laughs> I mean, oh, it changed me a little bit, but it, yeah, you got below the line. That's what it did. That thought got you below the line. It got you to, you're like, you can do it and Jesus will forgive you. Well, he did forgive you, but you now screwed up. You're not, it, that's not as clean as it used to be. It's not as clear as it used to be because he just moved you from above the line to below the line. See, every temptation is a thought. Won't you just, and then you're just like, well, ain't nobody noticing. I'll just think it. Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. We don't know where it's going to end. We hope you take control of it. But if you keep nurturing and you make a habit of nurturing wrong thoughts, your life is being stolen from you. And there will be a time there's no way to come back if you don't stop. Refuse to yield to negative thought. Set your thoughts on Holy Spirit thoughts. I mean, go to war. Whatever is joyful. Joy is a thought. Peace is a thought. Love is a thought. Forgiveness is a thought. Generosity is a thought. Set your mind. I'm going to think, you see, I don't even like that person. Stop thinking about that. Stop thinking about what they did. Take, arrest that. Well, he took $50. He took $1,000, $5, 5 million. Stop it. Arrest that thought. Because it's going to make you bitter and angry and dumb. And it's going to steal your future. Well, I just like to think about how my husband did me wrong. Stop thinking about it. You can change the future. You can't change the past. So think about, and you've got to capture that. I ain't thinking that. I ain't thinking that. I ain't thinking that. Say it out loud. Try it right, right now. Say, I ain't thinking that. All right. So was, I hope nobody was thinking, I hate Brother Bray. <laughs> but you just said you ain't thinking that anymore. But let me get to the bottom because number three is this. And I'm, I've got to try to finish. You can, somebody said, you can do all things, Pastor Bray. You know, when I said, got to try to finish. Okay, moving on. Number three, you can completely renew your mind. Everybody say completely renew. That means it used to be new. It needs to be renewed. Y'all just brainwashing people down to that church. Yes, we are. My brain needed a good scrubbing. How about yours? I mean, I, I need as much brainwashing as I could get. I mean, bring it. Play it, play it while I'm sleeping. Put, put scripture on while I'm, because I need to scrub this thing down. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you this, because then we're going to pray for people. I got something. I know somebody is going to leave here different today. Ephesians 5, I love this. This is the passage that says, To make us holy and pure, cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the Word of God. Everybody say, I need a shower. See, you don't know, but when you leave church, you just had a shower. You just had to be quiet for a while. You just got, you got showered. Like, oh, man. Doesn't it feel good to get out of a shower? Doesn't it feel like, oh, man. I didn't even want to go to the shower, but, man, that was, like, powerful. I got saved in that shower. Right? You get out, you're like, man, I'm clean. I can face the world. I brush my teeth, some of us. <laughs> but he said to make us holy and pure, cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the word of God. 
Water is a type of words. All that he does in us is designed to make us a mature church for his pleasure. Until we become a source of praise to him. Glorious and radiant, beautiful and holy, without fault, flawless. Are you with me? The word of God. Listen, you say, I don't know what to do. Look, man, just believe that there's power in God's word. He sent his word and healed them. Stop arguing with what God says. Stop, well, I'm not even sure. Stop avoiding God's word. Because this is like avoiding a shower. You get your mind and your spirit gets under the, this, these are the words of God. You get showered by the words of God. You get cleansed by the words of God. Thoughts, God's thoughts are in his word. You want to stop doing something? Stop thinking about it. It's called repent. I mean, the word repent means change your mind. You want to stop doing something? Stop thinking about it. Ever. So I'm just not thinking about it. See, you will keep doing it as long as you're like, wait a second, maybe just one beer. Now, I don't care if you drink beer or not. I'm just saying, you want to quit drinking beer? Stop thinking about it. You want to quit doing something? Stop meditating on the things you don't want to do. Like, I want to lose weight. Stop thinking about brownies. In Jesus' name. <laughs> I mean, you're thinking like, I'm going to die, but all you can think about is Oreos, Oreos, Oreos. Oreos are dancing through your head at night. You don't even like Oreos, but now Oreos are dancing. You're counting Oreos when you go to sleep. Like one Oreo, two Oreo, three Oreo. <laughs> you want to lose weight? Meditate on how you're going to look. Meditate on doing the things that it's going to take to get there. Look, ramp up. Don't just say, I'm going to start a diet. No, no. Give, give yourself five days of thinking and then ramp up and guess what nothing is impossible to you if you will just put into place what it is that God has meditate on what God has for you you want to start doing something meditate on it long enough confess it dream it write it imagine it stop being discouraged stop giving up stop yielding to disappointment I'm so disappointed stop it can I, get a, can I get mean with you a little bit? Stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Well, I tried. Stop trying. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. 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 I'm just not going to allow that thought. God told me the pastor used, God used the pastor to tell me, I don't have to think this, not one second. Yeah. You're accepted and loved and blessed and holy. Your chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God sees you how you are in the future. He is not your constant critic, but you have to stop getting discouraged. You have to stop getting frustrated. You have to stop being addicted to feeling sorry about your poor deal. You got to get rid of that and say, I'm the most blessed. My life is the most blessed. I'm so blessed. Look, everything is right there for my life. Meditate on these things. Give yourself, the Bible says, completely to them. And I'm going to finish with this because this is what I wanted to release. And I'm going to try not to preach it because of time. Create, number four, creative thinking is God thinking. How often are you creative thinking? Creative thinking, how do I solve a problem? Not the problem. And oh, how bad it's going to be. Well, I don't have enough money. You think you'll get the money. There's money all around you. And you do stuff that other people can't do. But you're thinking about the opportunities you don't have. But you like things that other people don't like. You like to do things other people don't like to do. You could be rich cleaning houses. You could be rich cutting grass. Some of you are getting mad. See that truck, the guy that used to go to church with you driving the big truck. And he's got 14 trucks now and he's like living in a mansion. And he's like, you remember him 10 years ago cutting your grass. And you were like, look, that dude's going nowhere. He was until he thought, if I can make 500 a day myself, I can make 1,000 a day with a team. And I can make 2,000 a day. And if I had a truck, I can make 5,000 a day. And so he locked in and he used his brain. 
And today the Holy Spirit wants to blow away the barriers that are keeping you from God's future. You say, I'm a bad person. Well, no problem. The blood of Jesus cured that. Come on, say it. We say, by the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. Now let us soak in again. Say, by the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. By the blood of Jesus, I've been delivered from all the power of the enemy. Now see, these are God's thoughts in your mouth. These are just thoughts, but they're God's thoughts. Make you feel different, doesn't it? Say, as I walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus is continually cleansing me from all sin. Come on, say, I don't live in the shadows. I don't live in the secret. I walk in the light. And his blood is always cleansing me. By the blood of Jesus, I'm sanctified, set apart for my purpose. By the blood of Jesus, I'm justified. When he looks at me, it's just as if I'd never sinned. I am not insecure. I am not rejected. I am not broken. I am not the sum of the bad things that happened to me. I have a great future. God has a great dream. I choose to enter now into the great dream of God. Come on, lift your hands up and say, all things are possible to him who thinks right. To him who believes, all things are possible. Healing, restoration, relationships, ministry, finances. All things are possible when I think like God thinks. I reject every negative thought. I reject every discouraging thought. I reject every pattern of failure. I resist. I destroy every stronghold that has plagued my life. I declare my feelings are free. I declare my relationships are blessed. I declare the blessing of the Lord is overcoming my life, overcoming my children, overcoming my body, overcoming my finances, overcoming my emotions. I declare I'm overwhelmed with the goodness of God. I declare and I confess I'm not afraid of anything. I declare if God is for me, who can be against me? Now, I want to read you the last one and you're going to receive this into your spirit and God's going to change your life. This is the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Last thing is this creative thinking is God thinking. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me on the way over here. He said, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness and a spring in the desert. Now, that is from Isaiah 43, 2. Behold, I will do a new thing. He's talking to you about your life. Now it shall spring forth. When? Now. When? Now. now. Now it will spring forth. That means you could miss it. Shall you not know it? God says. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, a way in the wilderness means I couldn't find my way out. I was walking in circles. That's how people die in the wilderness. They can't find a way. You know, when you walk around in circles, dying in the wilderness, you're thinking, there ain't no way. I've looked this thing over. I've seen every corner of this wilderness, and there ain't no way out. And God said, yeah, there is one, but you didn't see it. See, the essence of God's thinking is God's going to show you something you didn't see before. Yes, 
He said, I will make rivers in the desert. Well, everybody knows if it was a river, it wouldn't be a desert. And you walked around that circle, you never saw that river. It doesn't mean it wasn't there, you just didn't see it. You were so panicked that there was going to be no water that you didn't see the water that was right there. Now, this is a Holy Spirit moment. I want you to receive a promise. God is about to show you something you didn't see before, and it's going to save you. <laughs> and it's not going to show you some secret, dark, terrible thing. He's going to show you a way that you didn't see before, a way to make this marriage work, a way to pay off this debt, a way to get to the next level, a way to stop doing the things you did. God's going to show you a way in the wilderness. Come on, somebody. Come on. It's okay. You can just lift your hands and start speaking in tongues. This is a free church. You don't like it. Well, you know, it's in the Bible, so deal with it. Come on. God's going to make a way. You might, before you leave, might slip. I'm going to tell you, there's a time of thinking, a divine time of thinking in these holidays that is going to be your time. And you're going to just be thinking, and God's going to say, let me show you this. He's going to start, you won't get hooked on God showing you different ways that you didn't even think were there. It was there, but you didn't see it. All you saw was what it was going to cost. All you saw was what it was going to be. All you saw was what bad thing that could happen. But you were so obsessed with how bad it wasn't going to work and all that. You would refuse to even see it. It was right there. And he's going to make a river in the desert. A river that you didn't see, you're going to see it. And you're going to say, man, if I'd known there was a river, I'd built a house here. Look, they're all around you. They're all around you. You are God's people. You just need to stop and think. Get into whole creative thinking. How do we fix it? What's the answer? Jesus knows the answer. Jesus knows the answer. Jesus knows the answer. Jesus knows the answer. Jesus has a solution. Jesus knows how to do it. You're not going to have to live with it. Come on, stand up with me. Come on, lift your hands to Jesus. Now listen, I understand the, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. The struggle in your mind, depression, fear, addictions, things like that. that ain't, I sound, made it sound easy. It's an easy choice. But you got to go to war. You got to use the weapons of your warfare. God is about to show you something. Come on. God's about to change the pattern of your life. The patterns of your life. You're going to go from victory to victory, glory to glory, faith to faith. You're not going to go from faith to doubt, back to faith to doubt, from victory to failure, victory to failure. God's about to bring you from a victory to another victory. He's going to change the pattern of your life. Now, here's what I want you to do. Bray uh, is going to sing that song, and that's going to let anybody that needs to go can go get your kids. But those who have had a battle, um, that's that last song you did, Son of, Son, Son of Suffering, because I want you to know his blood, his stripes was for your healing. And we're going to believe that there's going to be a release of God thinking, which is creativity. You're going to write something. You're going to create something. You're going to design something. You're going to see something. You are not trapped in failure. You are not trapped in defeat. You are not trapped in mediocrity. God is about to open up your mind.